911, what's the nature of your emergency? Welcome back to the Tactical Living Podcast. I'm your host, Ashley Walton, joined by Detective Walton. Clint, how are you? I'm good. He just gave me a big wink. (laughs) (laughs) Remember when you were little and you were like learning how to wink and you seemed to like take your entire cheek to try to force Mm -hmm. your eye to close? (laughs) I don't know why that reminded me of that just now. But in today's episode, I wanted to talk about how the pain will leave once it's done teaching you. So just sit back, relax, and enjoy today's content. This reminds me of a quote that was so important and the the type of thing that you read and it just sits with your soul and to the extent where like, I'm like, man, I want to get that tattooed on me. And it talks about how once the student is ready, the master will appear or the teacher will appear. Meaning that when you finally have come to this point in your life where maybe you've reached a certain level of maturity or you've reached a, a certain milestone, we talked in a last episode about have like leveling up. So maybe you've reached a certain level of the game of life and you are now ready to be able to learn. There is this humble moment that takes place where you allow yourself to revert back to what it was like when you were younger and vulnerable. And you, you did understand that you were the student and not the teacher. And when we, when we get older, something happens to where we think that we're smarter than everybody else, right? Until we get even older and we mature even more and we start to recognize, hopefully, that we are actually still students and hopefully we remain in that place for the rest of our life. I'm very fortunate to say that I have never stepped out of the role of being a student. It's one of the most important vital elements of my life is to constantly be that student and not only that, but then to be able to also change the dynamics and be the teacher while being the student simultaneously. So it, it brought up this this thing that I've read where it talks about the pain will leave once it's done teaching you. And we can consider this in the physical form. We can consider, I mean, what's coming up for me is my knee aching right now. I've had two major reconstructive knee surgeries pending a third one. And when we have a physical pain like that, there is a lot of reflection that takes place. There's a lot of anger. There's a lot of emotions that might take place when we're experiencing physical pain. But another thing that's coming up is the emotional pain that we might experience. Perhaps it's from losing a loved one or me being broken up with by a fiance in the past. That pain is the type of pain that sometimes seems to stay with you forever and never go away. There are elements of my mom dying, things that still hurt that I don't think will ever go away. They certainly get better over time, but they don't disappear. And then there are other elements like the pain I mentioned with having a fiance break up with me that in that moment, you don't see any type of benefit from something like that happening. And sometimes it takes years and years of accomplishing that pain. And I think accomplishing that pain is a really good good way to word it. And then we're able to reflect back and we're able to have a new level of appreciation for the way that dynamics have changed within our lives because of that pain that we went through. And if we don't go through that type of pain, it's very difficult for us to understand what takes place during the healing process. And by having the navigation of that healing process, I think it truly makes us stronger people. And we can all think back to maybe somebody that we know personally, Clint, You have an individual who worked for your police department who went through a traumatic shooting and a traumatic recovery process. He's coming up for me right now. Or we can think of those stories that we've read of people who have become paraplegics and now they're doing some of the most incredible things that you just shake your head and, you know, it's inspiring and it's a beautiful thing. And it's from going through situations that cause pain that I think allow us to also create so much growth, not only for ourselves, but then to pave the way as inspiration for other people. Yeah, and it, exactly how you said it. Like we look at scars that we have on our body. If we're going to go a physical route of, we have these outside visible scars, and they've caused pain. They've gone through the stitches and whatever else you may have have experienced with it. But you've learned from that. You've grown from that. So you don't make that same mistake again and you keep progressing forward. Now you go internally with the emotional pains that come up undoubtedly. I mean, everybody in life will experience those emotional pains within themselves. It's, they're not visible to outside people, but 
as you progress, as you move forward through those invisible scars, it's, it becomes lighter and, and less pressure that's put on you. Yeah. And I love the, I love the element of a physical scar, not in a, not in a, (laughs) that sounds like morbid, but I love it because there is an individual inside of our police, fire, military, and families Facebook group who has had brain surgery. And she sent me this video of the most beautiful conversation that she's having with her daughter. And after she sent the video, she comments like, man, the video caught the back of my scar. And so she has the back of her head shaved and she has, um, a a significant scar on the side and in the back of her head. And the reason why is because she's had a really major brain surgery. And I'm like, dude, that is like the scar of a warrior. How many people can say that they've had their heads cut into their brains exposed and then worked on, and then you're still operating like a normal person, you know, like that is a warrior symbol in my opinion. And we might not always feel that way. I mean, I hate the scar on my knee too, and I certainly don't consider it to be a warrior symbol for myself, but I think that we need to understand that when we have a warrior symbol like that, even though we might feel a certain way about it, other people might have this completely different perspective about what they're seeing when they look at that. And when I see her scar, and especially knowing her story in depth, I see somebody who is just vibrant and beautiful. And I I would never look at anybody's scars or any physical feature on them and You know, if there was an impurity, let's say, like my scar, I believe, is an impurity. It wasn't supposed to be like that. It wasn't like that originally. I I don't ever look at somebody and have this sort of bully mentality. And instead, I think for the most part, kids and adults alike are curious. You know, we want to know what the story is. And when we know that there's going to be curiosity behind a physical scar in that way, then we can maybe embrace it a little bit more and develop better ways to be able to share the story of how it came to be and shift our perspective in a way to where maybe we can inspire somebody else. And not only that, but when, you know, I remember when I was younger and I first had had these, this giant scar on my knee. When I say giant, it's like 16 inches long. I remember feeling so down and not beautiful because of this giant scar on my leg. And my brother came into the bedroom and I think he like he just understood that I was worried about it, especially like as a girl and, you know, being in my my young teens. And he knew exactly like where my mentality was with it. And he reassured me about how the the fact that like nobody is going to care about what your scar looks like. <laughs> and, you know, we were both young at the time, so I'm sure it wasn't this like deep philosophical discussion, but it's something that I remember. And I think that it is it is such an important thing for us to be able to recognize our scars as as the symbols of something within our past that perhaps doesn't exist anymore, but that has certainly made us stronger because of it. And it goes into that leveling up kind of saga that we talked about earlier. And in I think it was a couple episodes ago is you're going to have scars regardless. No one's ever going to be perfect. I guarantee everybody out there has some type of scar on their body. It's what you learn from that is what, and what you experience with that is what you should really be taking away from that incident and how you recovered from it and what made you not become a victim of that scar, but a hero of that scar. Yeah, and one way of being able to embrace that, especially the physical side of it, is to share our story. So I hope that as you're listening to this, you can identify even just one scar on your body. And I'm going to challenge you to take the story that comes with that scar and to share it with somebody. And even if they know your story already, go a little bit deeper in depth and also share on the backside what it was that you learned from that scar. What are some of the things that now drive you to be a little bit better because of the strength, you know, our skin when we develop a scar is so much stronger because of the extra skin that grows over the scar to begin with. And so think about some of the the ways that you are a stronger person because of the scar that you, you now carry with you and then share that story with somebody else. And if you want to take it a step further, we would love to have you inside of our police, fire, military and families Facebook group. If you're not already go ahead and request access. And as always know that I am sending you a long, tight hug from my home to yours.